Hey crew, a ton of you have been asking in the comments and in the discord for the best stasis build on all three characters and today we're going to cover the Revenant Hunter. I tested all three over this past week in the Corrupted Grandmaster, so in some of the hardest content in the game and on par with the likes of the Lightblade Grandmaster and I have to say that stasis performed way better than I had expected. And just wait for the stasis titan video in a day or two because what you will see is pretty dang crazy. With the changes to the resilience stat that gives us 40% damage reduction all the time because we have a 100 resilience and we combine that with the whisper of chains which is another 40 percent damage reduction yeah you can see where we're going with this right out of the gate we will always have an 80 percent damage reduction on all three characters and it just makes us a tank and one of the hardest grandmasters and then we are going to take it a step further on all three classes and show you exactly what you should be using for the aspects fragments and what exotics and mods to just become a tank and face tank pretty much anything you want the awesome part about all this is there are no artifacts artifact mods used so each season if there is something new that could benefit the builds from the artifact just slot it in there and it will only make it that much more powerful. For example this season we have stunning a champion makes them ignite. Slot that bad boy in there for extra damage for every stun and this works on all the stuns that might happen while using stasis. You can also use any weapons with this build. Pellet shotguns got a nice buff and if you match the burn in a grandmaster they're even better. On the titan video that will be out hopefully in a day or two I used the fourth horseman and it was putting in some serious work again. Against champions. There is a dim link near the top of the video description in all my build videos for you guys to use and there will be a full build pick in the video for you to screenshot to make building this setup that much easier for you all. If you're new to the channel and found this video helpful or enjoyable then make sure to hit that subscribe button for me and become part of the crew here and thank you to all my current members of the channel for the extra support. It's absolutely amazing of you guys and I'll be running grandmasters with you all this week for that double loot. For the revenant hunter subclass make sure you're using gambler's dodge so when you dodge near an enemy we get that shuriken melee back. Our melee is that withering blade, that shuriken. We get two of them. This slows enemies and can freeze them when you hit two of them. And then also we're using dust field grenade. This creates that blue bubble that slows enemies inside it and freezes them. And we're gonna make this thing bigger and a lot better. For the two aspects, you wanna be using Touch of Winter. So our Dust Field Grenade increases the slow field size and creates a small stasis crystal on impact. This also gives us two fragment slots. And then for our second one, we're using Grim Harvest. Defeating slowed or frozen combatants creates stasis shards. These shards grant melee energy when picked up by you or allies. So we can have a total of five fragments with this build, which is just awesome. Our first fragment is Whisper of Shards, shattering a stasis crystal Crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate. This also gives us 10 resilience. When we shatter that stasis crystal inside the dust field grenade, that's going to give us five seconds increased regen rate on our grenade, which is just awesome. And when we shatter more and more or shatter a bigger crystal, we'll get up to 10 second timer on this. For the next one, we have Whisper of Rhyme. Collecting a stasis shard grants a small amount of overshield, which falls off after 10 seconds. Collecting additional shards adds to the overshield and refreshes the timer. In the gameplay, you'll see times where I go from like red bar health to full health with a full overshield. That's because of Whisper of Rhyme and collecting those shards. Now, when you don't have health, let's say you're in the red bar, right? Your shields are broken and you have low health. When you collect a shard, that actually heals you. So this is our source of healing. And then if you're already healed with full health, well, you're just gonna add an overshield on top of that. Your 100 resilience and your Whisper of Chains damage reduction stacks on your overshield. So your overshield becomes a really beefy overshield. It's very nice. Speaking of Whisper of Chains, that's our third fragment here. While you are near Frozen, targets or friendly stasis crystals you take reduced damage from targets get a plus 10 recovery out of this this is another 40 percent damage reduction on top of the original 40 percent from 100 resilience we're already at 80 percent damage reduction which is just awesome you're always near a stasis crystal which is from your dust field the center of your dust field or just near a frozen target this can also be a different stasis crystal from a fire team member or this can be a different frozen enemy from a fire team member that frozen enemy our fourth one here is whisper of durance slow from your abilities last long Longer. For those abilities that linger, their duration will also increase. We get a plus 10 strength out of this one. This will let our dust field last on the field another seven seconds longer. And then our last one is Whisper of Conduction. Nearby stasis shards track to your position. This one can be traded out for something else, but it does give 10 resilience, 10 intellect. And in a Grandmaster, we don't want to be chasing down shards. So it's very nice when these shards track to you. And like I said earlier, when I was in the red bar or low health sometimes, I would just instantly heal because the shards came straight to me from Whisper of Conduction, and then it healed me from Whisper of Rhyme. Now for the stats on the build, you definitely want 100 resilience. Get 100 resilience no matter what. Next, you would want high mobility and high discipline. The build gameplay that you're seeing right now, I was at 100 resilience for that damage reduction, which is the most important. I was also at 100 discipline to get that grenade back as fast as possible. 
and I was at I think 70 mobility. So it could have been better, but you don't need the 100 discipline and you don't need the 100 mobility. It just helps. Now for the mods, it's actually really simple. The first one we're going to be using is elemental charge. Become charged with light by picking up an elemental well. We're not creating wells with this build. We're only creating crystals from the subclass. But what we're gonna pair that with is elemental shards. Stasis shards count as stasis elemental wells for you. So every time we see one of the blue shards on the ground that we create or that an ally creates if they're running stasis, that will charge us with light every time we pick them up because of elemental shards. Now with that charged light, we're using three times firepower. I had firepower on my gauntlets, on my chest piece and on my boots. And what firepower does is gives you about 50 to 60% of your grenade back every time you throw your grenade. We're always charged with light because we're always picking up crystals. So while charged with light, regain a portion of your grenade energy when you use your grenade, consuming one stack of charged with light. We're also getting two times stacks of charged with light every time we pick up a crystal. So there's a very unique play style with this build. Really all it is is throw your dust field. When you throw that dust field, it creates this huge dust field, right? And it's gonna put that crystal in the middle. We're gonna pair that with renewal grass this is the exotic on the revenant hunter the armor perk is depths of dust field your dust field grenades have a much larger effect radius allies inside the dust field take reduced damage and targets inside the area deal reduced damage so not only do we have the 80 percent damage reduction from 100 resilience and whisper of chains we're also getting damage reduction just by standing inside the dust field and then on top of that if an enemy happens to be in the dust field with you you take reduced damage from that enemy as well or any other enemies within the dust field so there's a bunch of different ways that we're taking reduced damage here and on top of that it's making the dust field really big with a larger crystal inside of it because of renewal graphs so the way the build works is literally just throw your dust field grenade and stand inside of it while you're standing inside of it you're taking reduced damage because of the dust field you're taking reduced damage because of whisper of change reduced damage from 100 resilience and then if an enemy happens to be inside the dust field with you you're taking reduced damage from that enemy so we throw that dust field we stand inside of it once we throw the dust field and stand inside, I always throw a shuriken to proc impact induction on my gauntlets, causing damage with a melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. And then after that, I will dodge to proc bomber on my class item, reduce grenade cooldown when using your class ability. This will literally leave your grenade having to wait like five seconds for your next grenade and guarantees you to have a second grenade up and throwing it before the first one expires. So as you guys can see in the gameplay, it's a very strong build. This isn't a Grandmaster and one of the hardest Grandmasters in the game. If you have any questions with the build, leave them down in the comments and I'll try to answer them for you. The Titan build that we're going to do next is really, really good and probably the most fun out of the three stasis builds. And then the last one is the Warlock one we're going to cover and they're all from the Grandmaster. All the gameplay will be from the Corrupted Grandmaster. So that way you guys can see how strong these stasis builds really are and how much we can tank with each build. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.